Be Our Change. Positive, inspirational stories. Along with sharing positive, inspirational stories, we'll also be showcasing some amazing art and different types of artists in the basin. This is the Imagination Mural at the Library at the Plaza in Medlin. We are on location for Be Our Change. I had a chance to talk with one of the artists involved. She's also now getting national attention. This year, she was featured on Monster Garage. This driven big spring woman also has quite the story to tell after a very painful past. I do a little bit of everything. There's a saying that um, art is best formed when you're either falling apart or falling in love. And most of my life, I'm falling apart. Life hasn't been easy for Ray Ripple. As a 14-year-old kid, homeless, living on the streets, to an 18-year-old stripper with a, a tiny baby, not knowing how I was gonna make it. But the single mother of two kept focused on her passion. Her art. I'm very proud. <laughs> this town has been the only place that's ever embraced me or made me feel like family and made me feel like home. It's really cool how a woman could be that talented and do all of that herself. And she doesn't shy away from her dark story. She uses it to spark encouragement in others. If you just never give up that fight to survive, you'll always make it. For her involvement here at the Midland Downtown Library, she created these popular metal wings. Ripple also constructed a hot air balloon sculpture. It was completely made out of scrap metal from oil fields. Seven birds were created to honor the victims who lost their lives during the 2019 mass shooting. A Greenwood man turned his creative hobby into a successful business, and it's a profession much different than his previous one. Now it's just a matter of following a line. For two decades, Michael Pardue. And it's like welding. And every day he comes in with something different or something new. Has been a silversmith. Now I would see these really fancy silver bits and spurs that some of the other guys on the cowboy crew had. I couldn't afford any of that stuff. I admired it, I really wanted it, but we were broke. I kept telling Tammy one of these days, I'm gonna learn how to do that one of these days, I'm gonna just make my own. And that burning desire sparked him to teach himself. Very first started, I learned it just by going to the public library and checking out books. The internet wasn't really a thing. He could do it with his eyes closed pretty much. Pardue was also a firefighter in the basin for 31 years. Most firemen are very creative people. He just retired last year. With that much time off, you have to find something to do. Or you'll be really bored. <laughs> so, I mean, you will. I am very proud. From belt buckles to knives, Pardue does it all. You can tell he tastes great pride in it, every single bit of it. Every piece looks... Amazing. And as part of his special signature. This one is, says gratitude greater than expectations. He works to inspire. That was one of the greatest sayings I think I've ever heard. I mean, if you can keep your thankfulness and your gratitude above what you expect on a daily basis, man, you got it made. We're just following the line that I drew on there. And is deeply proud of his West Texas roots. I was born and raised here, so I'm very proud of Midland. As you can imagine, creating his items can take countless hours, but Pardue says he can create a belt buckle in six hours if he's extremely focused. He has customers from all over the United States. Cowboys are particular about what they wear, and one Gardendale man has some unique skills to help those cowboys look their best. Peace. <sighs> By piece, detail, by detail. Working with leather takes patience and skills. You'll never build a piece that you're 100% happy with. For 18 years, Brody Bolton. You always wanna 
take what you did there and improve it on the next piece. Has been creating custom handmade leather items. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful art. I grew up around things made out of leather, saddles, belts, everything. He was once a professional bull rider. That also kind of went along with lots of things made out of leather, you know, shaps and protective vests and belts that people hang their belt buckles they went on. And it's part of a Texas history cowboy culture. Longtime customer Francisco Lira. I like to get something unique. Unique and personalized. He's done uh, two of my belts and uh, right now I got him to work on my leggings, uh, chaps. Chaps, it comes from Spanish chaparreras. The whole kind of mentality of, of the Western heritage and the cowboy you know world per se is is it's a lot about individualism cowboys are very independent and that includes what they wear you know they want something custom they just want something with their brand on it we're created by a creator we have that same spirit within us to want to create something that's beautiful and you know with leather you're taking something that's that's dead and and kind of giving it some life again here's something that may surprise you Bolton actually taught himself how to work with leather. His business is called 3B Leather and his leather shop is located in Ector County. Bolton also has quite the following on Instagram with around 28,000 followers. I actually started with my father when I was younger. A local landscaper with some unique creations. My favorite thing is just the history behind it. That history includes U.S. presidents, a closer look at a popular basin hotel, and a legendary restaurant in our area that some say is haunted. Those positive inspirational stories still ahead on BR Change. Meet a basin man following in his father's footsteps. You could say he approaches his business like an artist creating something magical. My putt-putt golf is on point. Now, I'm a big golfer. I've been playing for the past 15 years. Check. I love chess, so the big chess board for me was a huge, huge addition. It's not your typical backyard. A project like this from design to finish took about a week and a half. It's fun, but it's art, it's creative, it's beautiful. I actually started with my father when I was younger. It was it was more of a of a chore, but as soon as I got older, you know, I I started making up my own landscaping and uh, put a lot of work into my designs. Manny Flores that, has that, been a landscaper for 11 a years. They'll throw in, hey, you know what? My wife likes this, or or my husband likes this, and. I, I take that to a different level. I take that to being something unique. For this particular Odessa home, the landscape company put in a volleyball court, a chess board, as well as a putting green area. Being able to come come down here and un unwind at the end of the day, uh, it's, it's a blessing. Just trying to make them. When the houses are being built, a lot of families choose not to do their backyard. You know, it's just completely dirt and, and gravel. You come home one day and the, the backyard's completely redone. It's, 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 it makes it so much more fun to live here. And take a look at this, another unique type of landscaping Flores does, putting a trampoline in the ground. One of the benefits of using turf is that it requires little to no water. We do have a 1929 Ford um, that was featured in Forbes magazine. A close-up look at a historic basin hotel. You have to think outside the box. The owner of a legendary local restaurant with some valuable advice. She smelled the popcorn when you would walk in. And you could say the Ector Theater is getting a second chance. Two places rich in history here in the basin that some believe are haunted. One's a hotel, the other a restaurant. We want to encourage you to explore them. First, an inside look at the historic hotel saddles. A dramatic sight 
in the heart of Big Spring. Whether your view of the historic hotel is outside or inside, there's no shortage of beautiful views. We are Big Spring, Texas with the big historic hotel. The hotel's food and beverage director, Jessica Alvarez, grew up here. My favorite thing is just the history behind it. The hotel first opened October 1st of 1930 and stayed in operation until the early 1980s. It was just an old empty building. For 30 years, it sat vacant until finally being renovated and reopened in 2012. Brent Ryan purchased it for $75,000 and uh, put in a $30 million renovation at this property. When they renovated this property, they really did everything to try to keep it the way it was in 1930. This is the presidential suite. It is on the 14th floor. There have actually been two presidents that have stayed here, LBJ and uh, President Hoover. We also have had um, Lawrence Welk, um, Buddy Holly, and then Elvis on the third floor. The presidential suite also has a fancy bathroom. There are TVs above its tub. We have a probably the, the best bathroom in town. Uh, funny to say that. And for guest services manager Justin Norwood, who also lives in Big Spring, his favorite part. I love the neon signs at night. Um, I, I can actually see it from my house. There's also a stunning staircase and a phenomenal poem. But maybe even more interesting than what you'll see is what you'll hear. A housekeeper that um, said that she had seen a ghost and then, you know, kind of was just really uh, spooked out by that. Hotel Settles General Manager Iman Campbell shares a bit of the hotel's spooky history. We've heard where, you know, there's somebody in the in the bar. But, you know, if I was a ghost, I guess that's where I would hang out too. Free drinks after bar closes. So. <laughs> I think people want to say it's haunted and want to hear ghost stories, but no, nothing yet. <laughs> the lobby also has its own fair share of history from incredible photos to this. Um, so we do have a 1929 Ford um, that was featured in Forbes magazine. We have two phone booths that were in the original property. They're not functioning, unfortunately, but they are really fun. There's so much to see. I feel like Big Spring really needed it. It did bring life back into this town. And this historic hotel also gives people who live in Big Spring something to brag about, something that makes them stand out from the rest. It makes me feel proud to be from Big Spring. It makes me proud to say that this is my home and this is what this town has to offer. else interesting about Hotel Settles, the building was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 2013. The owner of a popular restaurant is working to encourage others. He's also telling us how he's staying positive during these difficult times. It's a local landmark. It's amazing. The legendary Barn Door Steakhouse first opened in 1963 and is a staple in Odessa. Adding to its appeal, the historic Pecos Depot. About 1973, um, they moved in the Pecos Depot, which sits on, on the north side of the restaurant right now, and that was the original train depot in Pecos, Texas. Frank Green actually bought the Pecos Depot for $5,000. Some say this part of the restaurant is haunted. Turned around like this and I could see Billy the ghost. If and you visit, so you'll hear more ghost stories as well as be entertained. It's not often customers get to see owner Roy Gillian play the fiddle. How about that? These days, though, he's changing things up. Here this last year, it has been extremely, extremely tough. In order to stay afloat. Right now, we're at about anywhere from 35 to 40 percent down in revenue. Gillian now has a new general store inside the restaurant as well as a pickup window. You have to think outside the box. Even with the changes, many customers keep coming back for the nostalgia. It's like stepping back in time. Some have been coming here for decades. I've been coming here probably about 30 years. Growing up, there were five kids and, and 
in our family. It almost it never failed that we always chose to come to the barn door. It was so cool to see steaks being cooked behind the grill there. I come here for my anniversary every year still. Now more than ever, they're hoping these locally owned businesses not only survive, but thrive. We're losing a lot of history when these restaurants go under and it's really important to get out and to support these businesses. The staff is also hoping for that support. There's just a lot of, you know, cool things that are going on with it that you don't find at a lot of other restaurants. It's their livelihood. February will be 22 years. Longtime employee Kim Moya has formed a close bond with many of the customers. I know about their families and they know about mine. In our house, we pray every morning before I come to work. All kinds of stuff right there. That's Gillian's okay. faith has gotten him through this pandemic and he'll keep fighting to keep the barn door open for many more generations to come in the basin. Gillian also does quite a bit for his employees from giving away scholarships to even helping workers with medical conditions. And Odessa Landmark has lots of fond memories for many in our community. A closer look at a popular local theater. The Ector Theater first opened in 1951. On Saturdays, the lines would go up and down both sides of the deal here because that was a big deal to go to the, the theater. Odessa resident Gary Dusler worked as a projectionist. Of course, you smell the popcorn. When you would walk in, there was a pair of, uh, of velvet drapes that kept you from going into the theater and kept the sound in. And you would open it up, and there it was in all its magic. And I will never forget this for my entire life. I was five years old and Fort Stockton did not have a movie theater. And my grandmother pulled me out of school <laughs> and drove me up here to Odessa to the Ector Theater to see Star Wars. Randy Ham with Odessa Arts gave us some insight into the renovations. It really keeps a lot of the 1950s mid-century architecture, uh, but bringing it into the 21st century. Here's a look at the theater in 2016, standing alone. In 2018, construction began around it for the Odessa Marriott Hotel and Conference Center. And here it is today. It's restored to its former glory after four years of renovations. Now the theaters, and I understand times change, but one theater in Odessa looks like one theater in New York, looks like one theater anywhere else. There's no individuality. And I'm afraid that we've gotten away from that. Dusler is glad to see it revived. You can't cookie cut history. It's here and once it's gone, it's gone forever. The Odessa resident says he can't wait for this pandemic to end so people can see this piece of history for themselves. It's a wonderful experience and I think people don't have that anymore. So if you get a chance to preserve your history in your town, fight for it. the Ector Theater is that it's considered a multi-purpose facility. It can be used for keynote speakers, theatrical productions, live music, and to watch movies. It's a chance for me to catch up on reading and get smarter. We take you to a local bookstore that's been around for more than 30 years. It gives those people just a little bit of hope. Hear from volunteers of a local nonprofit, and their changing lives. That's next on BR Change. The internet forced many bookstores to close their doors, but there is one here in the basin that's been in downtown Odessa for almost three decades. The secret to its success. Making money selling books isn't always an open book. Currently we have no rent and rent, like I said, you know, even 30 years ago was very expensive. Ye Old Bookworm first opened its doors in 1991. Eight years later, Dorothy Bennett and her husband had paid off the bookstore. We own the building. That is the, I think that is the biggest staying 
power for us. They've also adapted to the times. We were probably one of the first people that started selling on the internet 28 years ago, before Amazon even. Um, they were not in existence when we started. I really like it. It's a chance for me to catch up on reading and get smarter. 10-year-old Andy actually prefers physical books. On the computer, you have to open tabs, apps, and different things to read. I don't think that they will ever go completely away um, because too many people like the uh, the feel and the touch, the smell the, the, of a book book. Another perk, Timothy the cat. Oh, kitty, kitty. It's okay. Did you come to mama? I like animals. He's lived right here in the shop for eight years. Timothy will walk around with people in the store and um, show them the books. Of course, we had to ask this book expert about her favorite all-time book. Oh, Lord, it changes from time to time. Um, I guess the Harry Potter series and the Chamber of Secrets by uh, Rowling as well. When That's they first came out, I had, some, really had several people come in here and say, oh, they should outlaw those books. They should ban those books. And so I read them just to see you know, what was going on. It teaches some life lessons to kids. From lessons to leisure. All right, well, y'all have a great day. Dorothy's well, hope you, is you, simple, you. that our customers just enjoy the books. The bookstore does greatly utilize the internet. Right now, they have around 20,000 books there listed for sale. A nonprofit that's been in the basin for more than three decades continues to give and its volunteers are passionate about making a difference. That's what Helping Hands does. A local organization. It gives those people just a little bit of hope. That's very emotional and personal for volunteers like Deborah Northcutt. I've been here through the ups and the downs, so I've seen it. I remember they slept in tents in 76 in people's yards. Last year, we spent over $1.7 million assisting the people of Midland with rent, utilities, medical, and other expenses. The nonprofit operates a store. That's where it gets about half of its income. It's been devastating. I would say 80% of the cases we've helped since the pandemic has hit have been people that we've never seen before. I'm a retired from the, uh, from the oil industry. I've gotten to see a completely di different side of humanity. You know, when you're in the oil industry and you're making a lot of money, and then you get to see the other side, you only have to give a little bit. You know, just a little bit from a lot of people really helps. It pains me to see us through this downturn, but we are resilient and we are strong. And we will come back, and there is a plan, and it's God's plan. And this was God's plan for me, to come here and to help people and to work here. In 2019, Helping Hands in Medlin helped more than 2,000 families in Medlin County. All of the contributions stay local. Thanks for joining us for Be Our Change. We hope you feel even more positive and inspired after hearing these stories. Well, it's strange, but it's